Today we're going to go through the process of refilling your high prop and getting the maximum range out of your tensiometers. And it all starts with degassing the water. First we're going to start with the high prop sensor base. And the first thing you should do is get your DI water and your syringe with the needle tip and fill it with water. It's good to do a little degassing of the water before you start. The way you degas water is by putting your finger on the tip of the syringe and pulling vacuum and you should begin to see bubbles forming. When you're done, you remove the air. You do that process again, and you can see bubbles forming. This part doesn't need to be perfect. It's just good to degas water a little bit. So now we want to remove all the air, and now we're going to attach our tip. And then we can go ahead and attach our acrylic refilling adapter and fill this all the way with water. So first what we want to do is fill the sensor holes with a little bit of water. And then we can go ahead and attach our acrylic refilling adapter. Okay, now we wanna grab our syringe that has the locking adapters and the tube on it. And first we wanna remove the tube and fill this syringe with about 10 milliliters of water. Okay, now we wanna go through and degas this, this syringe pretty well. And again, we put our finger on the end of the syringe and pull it. And the nice thing about these is it locks in place so you can go through and degas this pretty well. Something that helps speed up the degassing process is tapping the side of the syringe and you'll see lots of bubbles leaving the water. Now this is a process that you're going to have to go through a few times before you move on to the next step. Now that we have the water in the syringe degassed fairly well, we're going to go ahead and grab the tube that we use to attach the syringe to our acrylic adapter. So we'll go ahead and attach the tube to the syringe and attach it to the adapter. And we'll go ahead and pull our vacuum. Okay. Now, one of the things you wanna be careful with when you're pulling vacuum on the sensor base is to not suddenly release the vacuum, whether it's from the syringe accidentally becoming detached or from you letting go of the vacuum on the syringe quickly because that can potentially damage the pressure transducers. So we really wanna be careful with that. All right, now that I pulled vacuum on here, I'm gonna release that vacuum slowly because what we wanna do is get as much potential vacuum pulled on here and what we need to do is remove some of the air bubbles out of the system. So you can see when I release that vacuum, there's a nice big air bubble there. And so we're gonna go ahead and detach the syringe again, remove that air, and then reattach the syringe. Now, this step, you're gonna to have to do this step a few times because you wanna pull as much vacuum as possible. You wanna try and reach the maximum vacuum that you can pull. And so in order to do that, you have to do this process over several times until you get all of the air removed and you can get a full vacuum pulled. And when you get that full vacuum pulled, what you'll notice is that there are a lot of air bubbles forming in the sensor base. And that's important. If you don't see that, then you're not pulling enough vacuum and you're not gonna get a good enough fill. And that's oftentimes what results in poor fills of the tensiometers. One thing you can do to check to see if you're getting a full vacuum pulled, you could always attach the sensor base to the computer and monitor the pressure as you're pulling vacuum. The goal should be to get above 850 hectopascals or 85 kilopascals when you're pulling your vacuum. So we're gonna set this aside now and just let it degas. All right, the next process step is gonna be degassing the tensiometer shafts. And we have two different types of syringe for each shaft that we have to work with. So we have a syringe that has no locking adapters that goes on the ceramic end, and then we have a syringe that has the locking adapters that will go on the other end. So first thing we wanna do is take our syringe that does not have the locking adapters and fill it with 10 milliliters of water. Now that we have our syringe filled with 10 milliliters of water, we wanna go through and go ahead and degas this syringe to the best of our ability, just like we did with the other syringes. Now that we have the water in this syringe degassed, we'll go ahead and get it ready to attach the tensiometer. First thing we wanna do is fill the rubber end with a bulb of water, 
and then attach the tensiometer. Okay, so this guy's ready to go. Now we want to go ahead and get our syringe with the locking adapters. And we're going to fill this syringe with 10 milliliters of water and degas this syringe. Now that we have this syringe with the locking adapter degassed, we're going to go ahead and grab the, the, the rubber tube end with the red ring around it and place that on there and fill it with water. And we can grab the syringe that's already got the tensiometer attached to it. We're going to place this end of the syringe onto the threaded end of the tensiometer shafts. Just going to slide it on. Okay. Now that we have that connected, what we want to do is we're going to pull a vacuum on this syringe that has locking adapters. And what we're going to start doing is one, we're going to start filling the tensiometer shaft with water and degassing the water at the same time. And one of the things you can do to help get the air out of the shaft is by tapping it. But it looks like this one's actually already pretty good. And then the next thing we want to do is release the vacuum again, just like we did with the sensor base, because we want to remove all of the air bubbles. So we'll go ahead and remove this part. And remove the air bubbles again. And reattach it. We're going to pull vacuum again with this. We got some air bubbles forming in there, but they're all coming out pretty easily. You just want to do this a couple times until you get the bulk of the large air bubbles out. So now we're getting to a good point where we only have a small air bubble remaining. So we'll go ahead and remove that last air bubble. And reattach it. And apply our vacuum again. Okay, now that we have this pretty much set to go and, and under a good level of vacuum, what we want to do is just go ahead and set it aside and let it degas. Ideally, you want to let it degas overnight. At least you should let it degas for a couple hours to get a good fill on the tensiometers. But if you want to get the best fill, it's best to let it degas overnight. Now you want to go ahead and follow those same steps again with the other tensiometer shaft. Get that degassed really well and set it aside and let it degas for 24 hours along with the other tensiometer. Now that we have our syringes degassed and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and attach the syringes to the high prop base and get everything set up to start a measurement. So one of the first things we wanna do is go ahead and disconnect our high prop from the refilling system. And pull it right there. And we need to remove the acrylic adapter and let the water spread out across the center unit. All right, the next thing we need to do is grab our tensiometer shafts and get those ready to go. We can go and disconnect those from the vacuum system. And we'll pull the cup out because we want to keep the ceramic wet so we don't let it dry out. So first, I always like to start with the larger tensiometer shaft just because there's more room before I wind up sticking my fingers in the water. So we'll grab this silicon uh, tube, attach it to the ceramic end. And we want to fill it with water, again, to keep the ceramic wet while we're going through the setup process. One of the things we want to do while we're attaching the tensiometer shaft to the sensor base is keep an eye on the pressure uh, on the sensor using the software on the computer. And, uh, and so we want to do that and we want to make sure we stay below 3,000 hectopascals. There are yellow and red lines that indicate where you want to stay out of and, uh, and you'll see that as we go through the process. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the tensiometer shaft from this adapter. All right, we have that ready to go. One of the things you want to try and do when you are removing this, you want to try and maintain that little meniscus of water on the, maintain that bulb of water on the end of the, of the tensiometer shaft, uh, because that helps us keep us from getting air bubbles trapped in the tensiometer when we're attaching it to the sensor base. So we have this ready to go. We're going to go ahead and attach it to the sensor base. Now, the best thing to do, what I like to do, is come in at an angle very carefully come in contact with the water and then slowly push it down and start threading it down. Now you want to take this process slowly because you do not want to damage the pressure transducers by doing it too fast. While we're threading this down we want to make sure we do this process slowly and keep an eye on the computer to make sure we do not damage the pressure transducers, make sure we do not over pressurize them. So we're going to continue to watch the pressure while we throw this down. When we reach the O-ring, we're going to see a quick spike in the pressure. 
And that's where we really got to be careful when we're threading the tensiometer down. Um, but once you get to this point, you want to do a, a quarter to half turn. Um, ideally, what you just want it to feel, you want it to feel like it's tight. Um, and, and that just helps ensure that you don't get any, get any air coming into the tensiometer while vacuum's being pulled as the soil's drying uh, from the O-ring. We only want this to happen due to normal cavitation. Now we want to go ahead and follow that, those same steps again with the other tensiometer shaft, get that attached, and we should be ready to go. So these are the steps for degassing and refilling the tensiometers for the high prop. Hopefully these tips will help you maximize the full range of your tensiometers and get that extended range that you can get with these special tensiometers for the high prop.